It's amazing. But man, the little she just, Bluetooth thing, the ear, it, ear it, It's earrings. astonishing. She talks. The only way I can describe it is she talks in circles. Yeah. Right? It's, it's like. Tim Dillon says it's like she does gypsy curses <laughs> because she speaks in gypsy curses. <laughs> That's very good. Uh, but it's, you know, we, we need to build an opportunity economy because if Americans don't have opportunity, yeah. then they're not going to have the opportunity to be Americans. And it's right. like, what the hell? The opportunity did to generate wealth say? and generational wealth. Like, wait a minute. Do you know how few people generate generational wealth? It means you have so much money, yeah. you're going to give it to other generations? Well, but like, there's, there's actually, okay, I mean, I, I give a lot of speeches, so there's actually a skill to this. I think that she is the Michael Jordan of using as many words as possible to say as little as possible. There's actually a certain gift that she has because <laughs> you listen to her talk and you, you know, you're a hundred, 200 words into it. You're 500 words into it. And you're like, what the hell did she just say? She didn't say anything. Right. This video is brought to you by TatumStore.com. TatumStore.com. Get the merch link in the description section. We got our brand new merch on the website, so don't forget about it. It's the Trump, uh, the MAGA garbage. They made the craziest comment ever, and we're going to capitalize on it, all right? Forget these people. This is the next deplorables. We're going to run it until we run them over in the election. And then after the election, we're going to still be the garbage can man. All right, anyway, link is in the description section. I want to tell you guys really quick about this poly market thing. Uh, this is where I'm going to look at the election as far as polling. I really don't trust the polls. You look at them one day, Trump is up, she up, Trump up, she up. And I and Trump said this on Joe Rogan's show. He said that he think they kind of full of crap anyway. You pay the pollsters to go out and do a poll and somehow it's favorable to you or somehow it's a tight race. And, and let me tell you this, y'all, they need it to be competitive. If, if one person was winning by a lot, they'll just show that the other person is winning by a lot and, and, and nobody will watch their show and it's over. They want to make it sound like, oh, now he's up. Now she's up. Now People are putting their money where they mouth at. Anybody can get on the phone and say, uh, uh, I'm, I'm voting for so-and-so and so-and-so. My wife said every time they call her, she vote for Harris on there. So you mess their poll numbers up. So who knows if it's real? People ain't going to put their money somewhere because they just don't like Trump. You know what I mean? Or they don't like Harris. I mean, this is money on the line. They got over $2 billion in this. So link is in the description section. Go to the link, hit the link, download the app so you can have some coverage and you can have a, I would argue, a more accurate polling about who's going to win and who's not going to win. Link is in the description section. Like, subscribe to the channel. Let's get into this. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's get into the real video. I had to say that poly market thing because I was not a big fan of it at first. And then I'm like, people putting their money in this. If you really thought one side was not going to win, you wouldn't put your money. You can say whatever you want, but your money... It's a different story. J.D. Vance um, on Joe, Joe Rogan's show, which I'm telling you, man, J.D. Vance is, he's A1. He, uh, he, he really performs and, and impresses me every single time. And I was really mad at what he said about Trump back in the day, but he has made up for him in a tremendous way. So let's, let's watch um, him, J.D. Vance on Joe Rogan, because I thought it was a really good take. Wrote a clip. And, you know, he, he told me that the, he was talking to the gardener at Mar-a-Lago about who the, who the vice presidential nominee should be. And that's one of, I think, Trump's sort of political geniuses is he talks to everybody about everything. And I was like, well, what did the, what did the gardener at Mar-a-Lago have to say about this conversation? Because this really directly in, impacts my life. And, you know, he, he basically said, well, I think I'm probably going to pick you, but I don't know. And I'm not ready to make a decision. And then he looks at one of his staff members who's in the room. He's like, actually, wouldn't it really set the world ablaze if we just made the decision today? And so why don't you come up with me and we'll just do the announcement in Butler, Pennsylvania? Whoa. And, and I said, and, and of course, not knowing at the time what was going to happen, I was like, absolutely, let's get this over with because I'm sick of not knowing. Let's just get this thing over with. And then he's like, ah, no, I'm not going to do it up there. We need to prepare for it better. So look, I'm not saying it's going to be you, but I'm thinking very seriously about it. Have fun. We'll see you after Butler, PA. And then, of course, I go back to home to Ohio. Oh, boy. He gets shot. You know, the initial reaction is I actually thought they had killed him because when you first see the video, he grabs his ear and then he goes down. And I'm like, oh, my God, they just killed him. And I was so I mean, first I was so pissed. But then I go into like fight or flight mode with my kids. I'm like, you know, all right, kids, you know, we were at a we were at a mini golf 
place in Cincinnati, Ohio. I grab my kids up, throw them in the car, go home and load all my guns and basically stand like a sentry at our front door. Oh, shit. And that was my, that was sort of my reaction to it. Anyway, I really didn't know it was going to happen until Monday morning. I didn't know who else was being selected. I think it was all the names that people sort of see out there. And uh, he makes this call and he's like, hey, do you want to be my vice president? I was like, oh. Was it literally just like that? Well, actually, what ha- what happened is I get a text message from a staff member on his team that says he just missed a very important phone call. <laughs> and I don't know, you know, because there's so much inbound traffic that I think it just went straight to voicemail. So I call him back <laughs> and I'm like, hey, sir, what's going on? He said, JD, you just missed a very important phone call. I'm going to have to pick somebody else now. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so I'm about to sh- the brick here. And then he says, no, 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 I'm just kidding. Obviously, I want you to be my vice president. And the the funny thing is, you know, my seven year old is in the background and he has no idea what's going on. And I love that, right? It's one of the good things about this. He has no clue what's going on. He's like, Dad, who are you talking to? He's talking about Pokemon cards, right? And um I you know, Trump hears my son in the background and he says, Well, uh, who's that? And I said, That's my seven year old son, you and he's like, put him on the phone. <laughs> so- <laughs> And I'm just anxious for the, him to get this statement out because in my mind right. it's not final until the statement is actually out. And he he, he talks to my son and, and he reads the statement that he is going to put out on Truth Social announcing that I'm the VP nominee of the Republican Party. And he's like, what do you think about that, Ewan? And my son Ewan's like, oh, that's, that, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. <laughs> and then he gives the phone back to me. He's like, I have no idea what the hell's going on. So I just loved it about um... – J.D. Vance and Donald Trump's dynamic. You know, it's funny because J.D. Vance just comes across very genuine. He, he didn't give some story that you know is unbelievable. I mean, he told a genuine story about his kid and everything, and I freaking love that. But let, let's look at some more clips because uh, Joe Rogan talks to him about a whole bunch of other things, and I got the title to the clips up at the top. So this is J.D. Vance's 2020 election thoughts. Roll the clip. This is, this is where I always get pissed about the media conversation around what happened in 2020 is what they'll do is they'll, they'll, they'll sort of find the craziest conspiracy theory about what happened in 2020. They'll debunk it and say, oh, look, this, this thing, we, this shows that nothing bad happened in 2020. There's a nonpartisan organization that actually looked at what would have happened to Americans' votes if they had just known the truth about the fact that Joe Biden fundamentally had traded his political influence for money. Like, that's what it was. It's, a, it's, a, it's an old-fashioned American corruption story. I will give you access to powerful people in exchange for money, right? That was the true scandal of the Hunter Biden laptop. Again, it wasn't Hunter Biden doing cocaine with a stripper. That was the fun part. <laughs> you can say that. <laughs> I have an election to win. Um, so that was the real it was scandal. The corruption. It was the corruption. And, and this evidence of the corruption. This, and, and, and direct evidence of the, of the corruption. And the nonpartisan organization said that knowledge, which was suppressed by the entire American media and big tech scene, that would have changed millions upon millions of votes. And we know that the number in four swing states was 88,000 votes that were the difference between Donald Trump and Joe Biden winning the 2020 election. So set to the side all of the other arguments about fraud and all the other rule changes that happened in the midst of COVID, we know that big tech colluded with our own sort of, I would say colluded. The one thing I'll say about Zuckerberg is, and I, like, I don't know him super well. I've never had a problem with him, but I do wonder if it's a convenient excuse. I don't doubt that the FBI said, hey, this is Russian disinformation, but these companies still have to take some agency over this too, right? So I think it was both the corruption of the FBI and the intelligence services, but also the big technology companies themselves. Both of them are at blame. And I think fundamentally, if they had not done what they did, Donald Trump would have won another term as president of the United States. You'll, mm. You're never going to be able to convince me that if millions upon millions of swing voters knew the evidence of Joe Biden's corruption and it was staring them in the face, that we would not have been able to, to pull that one out. And let me let me let me add this before you get to Puerto Rico, Puerto Rico, before you get to Puerto Rico. Let me just add this. He's he's not off about this because when. Uh, Hillary Clinton, she the same thing happened to her. When when people found those WikiLeaks came out, people found out how corrupt she was. She deleted thirty thousand emails. I mean, all the stuff that Hillary Clinton was doing and that had done her failure in Benghazi. I mean, all of these things made people realize that Hillary Clinton is not trustworthy, and therefore, she, it's no way in the world she's going to win an election against Donald Trump. She's a fraudulent person. 
And that could have swung the, the votes in, in their favor. So the same thing with Joe Biden, what J.D. Vance is saying is that Joe Biden, if people knew the truth about it, maybe some of those people that thought that he was a politician and would be back to normal, realize he's just as corrupt as the rest of them. It only took 88,000 people to change their mind out of millions of people. Boom, there you go. Even with all the shenanigans they did, that's the election. Let's, let's, let's hear J.D. Vance on Puerto Rico. You, of course, I'm sure paid attention to the kerfuffle over a comedian at the Trump rally at MSG. I think you even know this guy, right? He's a good friend okay, of mine, okay, yeah. Tony so, so, so he tells he tells a joke about, um, you know, Puerto Rico. The number of mentions on CNN about this joke in the last 48 hours, this was as of last night, 143 on MSNBC, 101 on ABC, 53 on NBC, 32 and on CBS, 31 in two days. They talked about that joke effectively nonstop. You know what it means to have 31 mentions on NBC News about this particular thing? That is a crazy that is saturation. Last night, Joe Biden called the half of America that's going to vote for Donald Trump garbage. Do you think that the word garbage is going to appear on CNN 141 times over the next two days? No. I would bet no. Now, what's the difference? Well, one difference is that it was a comedian telling a joke, and it's the president of the United States telling what he actually thinks. Another difference is, again, it's a comedian with, at best, a tenuous connection to the Trump campaign. And on the other hand, you have the actual sitting president at a vice presidential campaign event telling the vice president or sorry t telling the entire country at an event sanctioned by the Kamala Harris campaign that half of Americans are garbage and i guarantee the media is not going to cover this in the same way to how a lot of this you know if you can call it a mind virus or whatever it is it it does make people behave religiously yes so it's like they're ignoring all of these signs because it doesn't line up with this ideology that they subscribe to that's right like you awesome. you have to support trans kids like okay what are you even saying i have a 4 year old two year old every single day my four year old or two year old will come to me and say something that is bat insane <laughs> because they're four and two yeah like my four year old will come and say daddy i'm a dinosaur right i'm going to take him to like the dinosaur transition clinic and right. put scales on him and well, the other th how is this a new thing mm -hmm. so pervasive how is it everywhere and how are you letting them compete with girls in school this is this that one drives me bananas when you have yeah. biological males all they have to do is they don't even have requirements in some schools you don't have to be taking hormones you could just identify and you can compete yeah. as a girl and of course that causes injury to the young girls of course and I again th this gives me faith in the wisdom of the american people because if you see how radically the Democrats leaned into this stuff four years ago yeah. and how much you know Kamala Harris is running away from it today. Most Americans, they don't really care who you sleep with. They're pretty open-minded about most lifestyle choices. But when you talk about having a biological male compete with their teenage girl right. in competitive sports, Americans are saying, no, 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 no. This yeah. is crazy. You're causing injury to my kids. We have to stop this. It, it, not only that, it like ruins chances of getting scholarships. If you were the number one player, and then all of a sudden some guy comes along who wears lipstick, now he's the number one girl on the team. Like, what are you talking about? Yeah, yeah. There was a recent pool tournament in England. It's a woman's pool tournament, and in the semifinals, two guys are playing each other. Yeah. Well, and it looks <laughs> when you see them in the actual, you know, swimming pool competing, it looks like the biological males are running at 1.5x speed, and everybody else is running at normal speed. Right? This is just clearly different. Yeah. And you know, to your point about it destroys opportunities for scholarships, I mean, go back to the original reason why we wanted girls sports, why we have Title IX in the United States yes. of America to begin with. Like, we recognized that competitive sports, like, what does it teach, right? It right. teaches you how to participate on a team. It teaches you to recognize your own weaknesses and the strengths of your teammates and vice versa, right? Like, I, I'm, I'm the father of a two-year-old daughter. I want my daughter to learn these important life skills. I don't want her going into athletic competitions where I'm terrified she's going to get bludgeoned to death because we're allowing a six foot one male to compete with her in sports. I agree with him a thousand percent. Ladies and gentlemen, that's a little bit of clip. I want to show a little bit of what J.D. Vance has said on Joe Rogan. I think the polling should be 
this is the thing. A lot of people have already voted. Let's just be honest. I don't, I, I don't really think right now there's a lot that's going to change. I, I do not think, consequentially change, if that's even a word. I don't think that any changes that occur between now and the election will be consequential in the election. I, I, I just don't think so. I think at this point, if a person has made their mind up, their mind is made up. The only thing that can get people to turn out to vote, right, that's not necessarily going to vote for either party, is something catastrophic. I don't think it's going to be a, a difference maker. But what I do think is that it gives the American people who are Trump supporters, who are J.D. Vance supporters, a little more confidence that, look, you may have voted for Kamala already, or Kamala, you may have voted for her already, but I bet you won't do it again. Now that you've seen all these things, now that you know he's not Hitler and all this other stuff because you've seen him perform and, and, and participate um, on a podcast, you've seen his character. You could tell as sure as the noonday sun that the dude isn't a bad guy. And I think it begins to change minds leading to midterms because this is another thing that we got to think about. I, you shouldn't a person shouldn't let off the gas right now. Right. I mean, you got to be campaigning all the way to election night. Right. Because you, you can get 20 more people to vote your way or to turn out the vote. You want to do as much as you can to try to win. But also you got to keep the pedal going because the momentum needs to draw after the election all the way to midterm. Because that's going to be a contributing de de desirable factor in this a desirable factor for the, the people who are voting in this election. And I'll tell you this and then I'm going to shut the front door. It is important who's in Congress, the House and Senate. It's important who's in Congress. And if Republicans win and we somehow take over the House and Senate, that's going to be a significant advantage for Republicans moving forward. Because one of these Supreme Court justices within the next four years is probably going to retire. I honestly believe if Donald Trump wins, um, Clarence Thomas will retire. And they're going to put a, a young Supreme conservative Supreme Court justice in his place. And that person going to serve for the next 50 years. And I think that the Republicans are going to try to do that. Because what happens if Trump doesn't win, Clarence is going to try to ho have to hold on for another four years. Because if he retired now, the Democrats are going to put a Democrat in the Supreme Court. So this stuff is, this stuff is very important. And that's why I think the momentum is good. And if Harris somehow wins, with win, which I do not think that she will, if the Republicans retain the House and Senate, then we can block a lot of stuff that they may try to do to ruin this country. So this is incredibly important all the way around. And so I'm glad that J.D. Vance went on here, and I think it will have a residual impact as the momentum begin to move forward with Donald Trump being the victor. But anyway, I'll see you guys on the next one. I hope you enjoyed the clip. I'm out.